So today I have some of the most important information systems and technologies from the past. And this is a little trivia contest to see if you can identify what they are, what they were used for, and why they were important. The first one that we have here is something that is a little bit older, maybe a little bit hard uh, to identify, but its legacy continues to this day. Okay, so you can see that. So here's the next one. What is that device? What was it used for and why was it important? All right, this is something that you would have seen on everybody's desk in the 90s. I'll give you even a hint, it says haze on it. Doesn't say what it was. Okay, this next one here, hopefully you can see this. Bound bunch of paper. And you can look at this paper here. Here's our next one. couple of these here. What is it? Why was it important? And what was it used for? Here's our next one. Last but not least, Okay, the first thing, this right here, is some carbon paper. Okay, so this is what uh, was used to make copies. So you didn't have to type things over again. You'd put one piece of paper here, one piece of paper here, and it would make a duplicate as you were typing. It lives on to this day because we see the word CC on our emails that originally was on letters and it stood for carbon copy. That meant that you were being sent, or these were the people that were being sent, a carbon copy of this particular letter. There's also BCC, so blind carbon copy, and that basically says this is uh, someone we're not letting everybody know we're sending it to, except for the recipient. Okay, so it's blind to the others. Now we see that today in our email, so we see CC and BCC. Now some people are going to tell you that stands for computer copy or blind computer copy. Well, that's a bunch of BS, okay? It comes from carbon copy, okay? So that means carbon copy and blind carbon copy. The next item, it's of course a typewriter. A typewriter was used for typesetting documents. It allowed for rapid uh, production of typed documents. They didn't have to be write, written out by hand. Using carbon paper, you can even make copies of them. This device here, this is a modem. It stands for modulator demodulator. Basically, you plug your phone lines, your landlines into this, and it allows your computer co to connect up to another computer or to another modem. And um, this is how you got online back in the day. You may not recognize the device, but if I play the noise for you, You probably recognize that, and you can see that in movies that are a little bit dated. So I think if you go to, uh, for example, the one with Tom Hanks, You've Got Mail, you'll hear that noise in the background sometimes. So this next one is a ledger or a spreadsheet. Okay, so this is what accountants used to actually tally up things. So they had rows and columns here, and you would actually calculate everything out on this spreadsheet. 
Now, the first electronic spreadsheet was called VisiCalc, and it was uh, available on the early PCs, the Apple II computers, uh, as well as some of the ones that were running uh, an operating system called CPM at the time. That was one of the first killer apps. Because you can imagine being an accountant and you have to do all these calculations by hand. And if your boss wants you to run a different scenario and you have to change one thing here, well, then you have to do all the calculations again by hand. Once accountants saw a visual calculator or a spreadsheet program, they just went nuts. And it was the first killer app. They would pay anything they could so that they didn't have to do this drudgery work. And they could start doing some higher level intellectual work. This next one is a punch card. So this is actually how you uh, store data, how you made computer programs at the time. So these are called punch cards because of the punches that are in them. Kind of interesting, originally punch cards were uh, metal and they were used in the weaving industry. So uh, mechanical looms would basically be able to get their patterns from the punches that were in those cards. Um, they weren't made out of paper, though. They were made out of uh, uh, metal, I believe. Uh, and then this was adapted back in the days when computers didn't have much memory. So you actually had to store your data like this, or you had to store your program like this. Um, if you've flown recently, you may notice that this size looks very similar to your boarding pass. And in fact, the boarding passes originally were punch cards. So when you went through the gate, you would give them your boarding pass, and that would be run through a little punch card reader that would say, Scott's gotten on the airplane, so we're not going to let him use that ticket anymore. So it kind of allowed uh, airlines to make sure that you weren't double spending, you weren't using your ticket twice. This next one is a Rolodex. Okay, so this is uh, uh, a place to store business cards. It's kind of funny, Rolodex was actually the brand of a company. So you can see right there, it says Rolodex. And that brand uh, became so well known that people just referred to it as their Rolodex. It's kind of like Kleenex. Kleenex is a brand, but uh, I would say, give me a Kleenex and you know that I meant tissue paper. Okay, and when people said Rolex, they knew they meant something like this, which basically referred to a file of cuff customer information or customer business cards. And then finally, this is a floppy disk. Okay, so this is one of the big ones. This is an eight inch floppy disk. And this is how we could store programs and data. Some of them you could actually uh, use both sides of. Uh, and they were floppy disks compared to hard disks. This was in use when I was in college. So if you're in college today, a lot of the technology that's around you right now, that's going to be old and antiquated uh, when your children are in college and you're going to be able to tell them, I remember the time when we used to use iPhones. Well, maybe it won't be quite that bad.